Welcome to the graduate course, Engineering Analysis, part of the University of Connecticut uh, Master of Engineering program. Uh, the topic of this Engineering Analysis will be Information Extraction, and we are going to use this text, the details of which are going to be available on the course website. And I'm Jakob Bar Shalom, the author of this uh, textbook. And what we are going to do now is uh, follow the presentation view graphs. The textbook itself is like a superset of the view graphs. So uh, we use a subset of what the text covers. And the principal method of uh, information extraction we are going to discuss will be estimation. Now, there are a number of areas related to estimation, but first, what is estimation? Is the process of inferring the value of a quantity of interest from indirect, inaccurate, and uncertain observations. As you can see, the main issue that we are going to cover is the fact that in most, if not all, engineering systems, what we have is a situation where we have to deal in a systematic way with uncertainty. Uh, some of the areas where uh, estimation has been used, uh, starting with the oldest one that goes all the way back to Laplace, Legendre, and Gauss in astronomy. Statistical inference is another area. Uh, the area of tracking, uh, which really can be illustrated as the determination of the position and velocity of an aircraft in an air traffic control system, is another one, and we are going to uh, go in somewhat more detail in this area. And uh, the control of plants in the presence of uncertainty, whether it is just noise or unknown parameters, parameter identification, state estimation, all rely on the techniques we are going to discuss in this course. And there are a few other areas in communication theory, signal processing, image processing, and uh, so on. Now, more rigorously, estimation is the process of selecting a point from a continuous space, which we can call the best estimate. Decision can be viewed as the selection of one out of a set of discrete alternatives, the best choice from a discrete space. However, to make things a little bit more uncertain, we can talk about estimation in a discrete valued case with the possibility of not even making a hard choice, but obtaining what is called conditional probabilities of the various alternatives. So really what we have is estimation and decision, two areas which are overlapping, and techniques from both areas will be used simultaneously in many practical problems. Tracking is the estimation of the state of a moving object based on the remote measurements. We have remote sensors, radar, sonar, electro-optical, video. And uh, such sensors can be at fixed locations or on moving platforms. Now, at first sight, tracking might appear as a special case of estimation, but it is significantly wider in scope because not only does it use all the tools from estimation, it also requires extensive use of statistical decision theory. When some of the practical problems are considered, one such problem is called data association, which is my measurement in remote sensing we obtain the measurements from remote objects, and it is not always true that we know the exact origin of those measurements. So sometimes we have what's called measurement origin uncertainty, in which case uh, the which is my measurement question is very relevant. Filtering is another terminology, another area, which really is estimation of the current state of a dynamic system. The reason for the use of the word filter is that when obtaining what we call a best estimate from noisy data of certain quantity of interest, the thing we are doing is we are filtering out the noise. So 
The term filtering is used in the sense of eliminating an undesired signal, which in this case is noise. Another, in other situations, it can be a different undesired signal from an undesired source, which is not of interest to us. Uh, the next area that uh, is closely related to what we are going to cover is navigation. This is the estimation of the state of the platform, which is called own ship, on which the sensor is located. This would be the answer to the question, where am I? Now, an optimal estimator is a computational algorithm which process, processes the observations, really measurements, to yield an estimate of a variable of interest, such as to optimize a certain criterion, which can be minimum mean square error or a similar one, and will cover several such criteria. So what we really see that estimation is a scheme for information extraction and enhancement. Based on measurements or observations, we want to maximize our knowledge about a parameter, a state, a signal, an image, and so on. So this is what we are going to cover in this course. And now we can start classifying the estimation techniques based on what is the goal for our estimation, namely, what is the variable of interest. There are two categories. First one, the variable of interest is a parameter, namely a time invariant quantity, which can be a scalar, a vector, or a matrix. Second is the quantity of interest if the state of a dynamic system, it's usually a vector, which now evolves in time according to an uncertain or stochastic equation. So the bottom line is, in this case, we'll have uncertain observations about things which evolve in an uncertain, or at least not completely certain, manner. Consequently, we have two classes of estimators. One is parameter estimators, the other one is state estimators. We have a figure here which presents a concise block diagram that illustrates state estimation. In this figure, the first two blocks are black boxes, namely we have no access to variable inside them. First one is the dynamic system, which evolves according to certain model and there is some system error source that later we are going to call process noise. And what characterizes the system is the state, but we don't have direct access to it. Now we have a measurement system. Unfortunately, this system is also prone to sources uh, of error, and as the measurement errors here, we'll call it later measurement noise. Out of this come the measurements. So now we have access to these measurements, but they are imperfect, and uh, this is why we will use a state estimator. The state estimator will use prior information. Uh, we have a statistical description of the various uncertainties in the dynamic system, in the measurement system, as well as models for those. So with all this information and the real data measurements, we are capable of, or will be capable of coming up with state estimates and the uncertainties associated with those estimates. Typically, it will be in you know, statistical terminology, conditional means, and conditional variances. So, with this, we can see that we extract the information and we enhance it. Therefore, what we want is, the goal will be, to come up with a state estimate such that the state uncertainties are as small as possible and will quantify these uh, statements very soon. Okay, here is a long list of applications of estimation in combination with decision theory and uh, 
we have trajectory determination in tracking or surveillance, we have navigation in control systems, guidance, attitude control, pointing of sensors, we have steel making, we have chemical, nuclear, industrial processes and so on. In power systems we have uncertainties and we have to estimate the state of such systems. Failure detection, again we don't know exactly which failure modes might have arisen, therefore uh, we have to estimate what's happening in a system. Signal processing, image processing in communications, mostly wireless these days. In biomedical engineering, there's a lot of image processing that has to be done and decision whether there is a malignancy, for example. All these can be significantly enhanced using the techniques we'll discuss in this course in operations research. That's typically optimization under uncertainty. We have such problems. Mapping via remote sensing. You've got to take images and register them without ever having a perfect uh, idea about what's happening there. You will have uncertainties and you would like to minimize them. Uh, geophysical problems and so on. Econometric systems have a lot of uncertainties and uh, same state estimation is used there, demographic systems, and so on. Now we'll start with a preview of estimation filtering area. And uh, it will be a bird's eye view without equations, just present the way those variables relate to each other. Uh, we start with the least squares technique originated by Gauss and Legendre for parameter estimation, motivated by the study of the motion of heavenly bodies, to Kalman filtering for test estimation, which is the new technology that emerged in the 1960s. Uh, so we'll just stress the concepts here. So again, what is estimation? The process of inferring the value of some parameters which characterize for example, the motion of a heavenly body, and we know that the six parameters of planetary motion are three position, three velocity, and they evolve in a predictable manner, or the state of an object, for example, an aircraft, which evolves in a not completely predictable manner. Now, Gauss made the following very important philosophical observations on the physical observations that could be made on the, the motion of planets. So our observations are the measurements. And we can say that if the observations were absolutely correct, the parameters could be determined with perfect accuracy from a minimum number of observations. We know that we need n equations, which is n observations for n parameters. Then. Subsequent observations would confirm, but not correct, the values obtained for the parameters. However, since all our observations are only approximations of the truth, we should combine more observations than the minimum necessary to determine those quantities, because this way we can determine them more accurately. So, starting with approximate knowledge, we can correct it with subsequent observations so as to satisfy the observations in the most accurate manner possible. If you notice, the last observation made by Gauss is really the 400-year-old or so idea of uh, recursion. So, what we have really is the ability to use old data and new data in a systematic manner to obtain what we are interested in and this amounts to recursion. So here is a uh, version of uh, those observations put in a partially mathematical context. A basic description or a mathematical model of the system is available with some unknown parameters to be estimated. Might be the initial conditions, might be the dynamics of the system, or 
uh, others. Redundant data are required to reduce the effect of the measurement or the observation errors and to satisfy all the observations in the most accurate manner possible the residuals that we'll see are the differences between the observed values and the values predicted from the estimates should be as small as possible. We'd like to fit the data in a manner that gives us as little discrepancy as possible. The fact that we have to face inaccuracy of observations necessitates probabilistic modeling and the combination of the initial knowledge and the subsequent observations leads, as indicated briefly a moment ago, to the recursive algorithm concept. Now, the least squares or the Gauss Legendre problem can be stated as follows. If our observations consist of linear combinations of the parameters of interest, in the presence of additive errors that we call noise, which are assumed to be zero mean and Gaussian random variables, then the minimization of the sum of the squares of the residuals, the errors, in fitting the data, namely the least squares of the difference between the model and the observations, is equivalent to the maximization of the likelihood function of the parameters which is the probability density function of the measurements conditioned on the unknown parameters. Those of you who are familiar with the Gaussian distribution will realize that this is really due to the fact that the Gaussian dense probability density function really has a square of some difference in an exponent. And this is why the least squares and what's called the maximum likelihood technique uh, turn out in this case to yield the same results. We'll see this later in a mathematical uh, fashion. Having seen the parameter estimation problem known as the gauss legendre problem, we'll look at another problem which came about uh, around World War II, the Wiener-Hopf problem. And in this case, the variables to be estimated are not constant, they are not parameters, but they are time varying. And the objective here is to estimate a random process. The process to be estimated is assumed typically stationary, zero mean, and with known autocorrelation function. So we have a statistical description of up to second moments. Uh, we'll discuss in more detail all these statistical concepts later. Right now, just want to stress the fact that we do need a statistical description and uh, we have also other requirements like the cross-correlation between the process of interest and the observations, that's Z, uh, is assumed to be known. Uh, and this is the reason that uh, we will go in more detail. Now, the fact that we assume this known means we have the relationship between what we observe and what we are really interested in. And we obviously will need this relationship that's for the cross correlation in order to be able to make an inference on x, the variable of interest, from z, the variable we can observe. Now, the solution to this uh, would be an estimate x hat t of the process. We'll use the notation hat as an estimate, and it will be obtained in the frequency domain as a transfer function. Details will come later in the course, W sub 0 of S via Fourier transform. And the criterion that we want to minimize, our optimality criterion, will be the mean square error. And the resulting solution is called the Wiener filter. And it is illustrated next. OK, uh, here is the process. Xt goes into the measurement system, which, however, it is perturbed by noise. So we don't have access to X. Obviously, noise is a disturbance, not something we have access to, but we have access now to the observation Z of T. This goes into a system described by a transfer function, in this case, 
the Wiener filter, and out comes the process estimate x hat of t. So this is a linear time invariant system with a transfer function that we obtain based on the statistical descriptions of the xt and the zt and actually the noise, as we'll see later. Now, the more recent version of it cast in the state space context is called the Karman Busey problem. In this case, the object of the estimation is a random process, not necessarily stationary. You notice that from parameter estimation, we go to stationary process estimation, now to non-stationary process. The characterization is given by a linear differential or difference equation, both can be continuous time or discrete time, with known coefficients. And this is the state equation of a dynamic system. However, we have random disturbances which affect the evolution of the process. That's the dynamic equation. It is not a deterministic evolution, not perfectly known. We have what's called process noise there. So this is the dynamic evolution uncertainty. This process is then observed in the presence of measurement error or measurement noise. Now, this is the second type of uncertainty. Whatever you observe turns out also to be inaccurate. You don't know exactly how it evolves. You don't know exactly uh, the variable you observe because you have noisy measurements. However, we can put all these together with the appropriate statistical characterizations and the solution obtained in the time domain in this case, such as to minimize a mean square error criterion, is called the Karman Busey or Karman filter. That's Karman Busey is the continuous time version, Karman is the discrete time version. Now, let's go back to the least squares estimation problem. And there is a standard or a batch solution. And now we'll have a quasi mathematical description of the problem. So the LSE least squares estimation problem consists of the following. We have k measurements, each of them is an m vector, of a constant parameter, which is an n vector. Then the least squares estimate of this unknown parameter is obtained by processing simultaneously the entire measurement set. That's a k times m vector, which can be big, because k can be very large. Now, to obtain a new estimate of the parameter, when you get a new measurement, this would be the k plus one, k plus first, m vector. We reprocess the entire data, which is a k plus one times m vector, i.e. a new problem of larger size should be solved. Now, you can already see that this is not a very attractive way of tackling this problem. So, what we are going to do is, later, we'll show there is an algebraic equivalence between the batch solution and a very elegant recursive solution. So, the batch least squares estimation solution can be rewritten. There are some requirements, like the noise components in the k sets of measurements should be uncorrelated. This is uh, commonly uh, satisfied in most engineering systems. And we end up with a recursion that provides us the estimate based on k plus first measurements being the estimate based on the first k measurements plus some weighting matrix in general times a residual at k plus 1. So k now is a time index. This sub k indicates the value at time k and this residual will be the measurement at time k plus 1 minus the predicted value of this measurement based on the previously available estimate at time k. Now, what's nice, the size of this problem is the same for every k. So we have a recursion, and if it's known, and it is known to be equivalent to the batch solution, we have a much more convenient manner of implementing this estimator. Not only in this case this has value, but while this was for a parameter estimation, we'll see later that the same idea goes on naturally, is extended to state estimation. Now, 
in addition to having an estimate, what we are interested in is how good it is. So we need a quantification of the accuracy of the estimate. Fortunately, this accuracy will also obey a recursion, namely the precision of the estimate, really in a matrix uh, notation. This will be the inverse of the parameter mean square error that we'll see later will be a matrix, evolves in a recursion given by the following. Precision at time k plus 1 is precision at time k plus information about the parameter in the measurement at time k plus 1. And you can see the very nice additivity of the information that obviously will require a certain statistical condition on the noises in the observation, namely they have to be uncorrelated or independent. We'll work out these details later. So the precision increases, or the mean square error, or the variance decreases strictly if the measurements contain information about the parameters. Namely, and that's how we call it, if the parameters are observable, and we'll make the connection between the observability of a parameter and the error, and how it evolves in time, and whether we can observe certain parameters. It is not guaranteed that all parameters are observable from a certain set of measurements, and that is very important because if not, there are ways of getting around it. Now, if the parameters are constant, then as we get more and more measurements, namely as k goes to infinity, we accumulate an unlimited amount of information and the error of the estimates will decrease to zero. Infinite information means perfect information, means zero errors. So the least squares estimate converges to the true value. As the mean square estimation, mean square estimate in, no, the, the mean square error in the estimate decreases, so does the weighting in the recursion. When the confidence of the estimate grows, Obviously, new data will be weighted less and less in modifying that estimate. And as you get perfect estimate, there is no need for any further data. Now, in the case of a linear stochastic dynamic system, we'll discuss linear, later we have nonlinear situations as well. So we are interested in the state of such a uh, system, and we want to come up with an estimation scheme for it. What is a realistic model for a state of a system? Typically, there will be an imperfect initial estimate, will be an imperfectly predictable evolution. There will be a stochastic disturbance that affects its dynamics, and this is the process noise. Similarly, the measurement model will be uh, an imperfect one. There are two things which are less than perfect, only some state components or combinations of them are observed. Typically, if the state is position and velocity, we might be able to observe only position. And not only we don't observe the entire state, whatever we do observe really is inaccurate. We have observations corrupted by measurement noise. So, the evolution model for the state, the discrete dynamic equation, can be represented in this pseudo-mathematical manner as the state at time k plus 1 is a linear function of the state at time k plus the process noise at time k. And we have the observation process, similarly the measurement equation, saying that the measurement at time k is a linear function of the state plus the measurement noise at time k. Those of you who are familiar with state space equations, there is really a matrix multiplying the state here at time k, giving the state at the next time, but there is a, an unpredictable noisy component in it. And the measurement is some matrix multiplying the state. Again, uh, the dimension of the measurement vector typically will be less than the dimension of the state vector. And in addition to this, we have the measurement noise. Now, we need statistical models for these noise sequences. 
we assume they have known means typically zero, which means we have a zero mean uh, error both in the evolution of the system and in the measurement and variances. Uh, in the multidimensional case, these will be the covariance matrices that we'll discuss in detail. Uh, quantify the strength of these disturbances. They will be uncorrelated in time, namely that's what we call it, white noise. So the errors are independent from one time to the next and the two noise sequences are also uncorrelated from each other. All these are assumptions that it turns out can be met in real systems or if not we can modify the problem formulation such as to meet the assumptions and this is one of the major considerations in this course to understand all the assumptions in our engineering systems and because in some cases real systems do not meet them to modify the mathematical models such as to meet these assumptions then we have a large variety of tools that help us in this estimation or information extraction. Now, the solution to this state estimation problem, and we'll present the one in discrete time for convenience, that the discrete time Kalman filter, KF, is a short annotation, will compute the best estimate of the current state, again, in the minimum mean square error sense, based on the measurements up to the current time, and this is what is denoted as state estimate at time k. So the Kalman filter recursion is as follows. State estimate at time k plus 1 is the predicted state to time k plus 1 form just prior to the availability of the measurement at k plus 1, that's the k plus 1 minus, just before time k plus 1, plus the weighting, some kind of a matrix that we'll see later in detail, at k plus 1 times the residual at k plus 1. What is the residual at k plus 1? Is the measurement at k plus 1 minus the predicted value of this measurement at k plus 1 based on what we knew just before time k plus 1. So, you can immediately see the remarkable resemblance of this Kalman filter to the least squares recursive, the recursive version of the least squares estimation. And here it is. The least squares estimation recursion is parameter estimate at k plus 1 is parameter estimate at k plus weighting times the residual. So, with this we really have a nice connection between the parameter estimation and the state estimation. Now, the accuracy of this estimate, again, we call it precision, which is the inverse of the variance in the scalar case, will be the inverse of a covariance matrix in the vector state case, is as follows. Precision at k plus 1 is precision just prior to time k plus 1, plus what we call the information about the state in the measurement at k plus 1. So, again, we have the same nice additivity property, and this is very important to remember. It hinges on one of our assumptions we just indicated before, that those noises are uncorrelated in time. So, every time you have a totally new disturbance, and whatever information you get, it turns out, does enter additively into this equation. Now, what about the filter gain? This gain reflects the relative accuracy of the predicted state versus the new observation because the filter gain really provides us the answer as a linear combination of what we knew before the measurement and what the measurement gives us. So that linear combination uh, quantified by this filter gain will tell us the following thing. The new or the updated state estimate will be an optimal, the optimal combination of the entire past data, and it turns out the predicted state is what is called the sufficient statistic. That's all that you require from the past data, and the latest measurement. So this is what the gain says, the optimal combination of old data and new data. 
The sequence of the operations in the Karman filter, we'll see it in the figure in a moment, and uh, before seeing the figure, we have to indicate that we have calculations involving the state estimate, which use the measurements, and obviously they have to be done in real time. However, and here's a very fortunate thing, the calculations involving the variances or covariance matrices in the multidimensional case, which is the quantification of the precision of our estimates, are data independent and they can be done offline even before the data are obtained. Just knowing the statistical characterizations of the uh, various things entering into our system, various noises it turns out, that's all it's needed, uh, we can calculate those things, the variances of these estimates, or their precision. We can pre-compute them using the statistical descriptions, the variances of the noise components, before we ever see the first piece of data. And here is the block diagram which describes the sequence of the operations in the Karman filter. We have the state estimate at time k. From it, we come up with the predicted state 2 time k plus 1 from what we knew just before that time, and that's called predicted state. From this, we can calculate the predicted measurement again at time k plus 1, given what we knew just before time k plus 1, that's the minus here. Now something comes in from the outside, and this is the measurement at time k plus 1 which can be combined, as we have seen before, between the predicted state and the measurement. Using the filter gain, we can come up with a nice linear combination that gives us the new updated state estimate at k plus 1. Now, the second column represents the calculations of the precision. We have the variance of the state and the terminology used here is for the scalar case for convenience at time k. From this we can calculate the variance of the predicted sta state at time k plus 1 knowing or based on the information just prior to that time. We can calculate the variance of the predicted measurement at time k plus 1 knowing having the information just prior to that time. We can carry the filter gain, and you can see the filter gain will go into the new state estimate because it combines these two things, the predicted state and the predicted measurement and the new measurement into the new state estimate. This filter gain, uh, after it has been used here, uh, will be used to calculate the variance of the new updated state. So this is the sequence of the operations in the Karman filter, and as you can see, the left column uses data from outside. The right column run, runs on its own, does not need any external input, except obviously the initial variance. That's, you know, any recursion requires an initialization, but it feeds into the recursion for the state estimate. So this is why the second column the precision of the variance or the covariance matrix calculation can be done entirely offline.